Hello and welcome to another AGD tutorial. In this video I'm going to be looking at getting started making a game which would be similar to Ultimate's Attic Attack and uh, we'll be looking today at just getting started how we're going to set up the rooms and uh, the sprites and the movement of the player so here's the example as you can see with uh, a little sprite and he can move from one place to the next and uh, I'm going to assume that you know how to set rooms up like this I will show you the blocks and uh, so you can copy them and of course the sprites but I'll assume if you've watched perhaps uh, Paul Jenkinson's tutorials they're very good and they can give you some information about how to get a basic setup going so I'm going to assume you already know that let's take a look at the screen then the screen here is actually 22 by 22 and the play area the central play area is 16 by 16 now the original attic attack game actually used uh, a screen which was uh, 24 by 24 like that and around the blue area that you will see there were some red lines now a 24 row uh, display is not possible on AGD directly you have to use uh, put blocks to draw the last uh, the last row in so I'm not going to do that I'm not too worried about having those extra red borders um, the gameplay won't be affected it's just an aesthetic so it doesn't really matter too much let's take a look at the blocks then so the first six here the red ones are used to draw the room itself and then we have a set of purple blocks which you can see here and they'll be used to draw the doors and there are four doors one to the north to the east to the south and of course to the west um, these take up eight blocks each um, you'll notice they're all solid wall that's very important as well and um, you can copy these you can pause the video if you like or if you prefer I'm probably going to make a binary file available which will be uh, downloadable on the uh, Facebook AGD site uh, together with some instructions which will show you how to uh, load these um, images into your copy so that you can play about with them. Now we also have two more blocks at the end. The first one which you'll see here coming up is a custom block. Um, it's uh, basically white on black and it's used for the doors to know whether or not they are going to be open or not. We'll see that in a later video. And the final one, again in a later video, is a black on black block. We're going to create a small square to hide a sprite emitter off the main play field where the player can't see it. So, as you can see here on the screen, this is how the rooms are drawn. The uh, red lines are used to uh, display the walls, and we've got the doors. It's all very straightforward. As I said, 16 by 16. The doors are four blocks wide, so the walls on either side are both six blocks wide. Six plus six plus four makes 16. So that's basically that. And you can see the same pattern repeated in the other rooms, just with uh, doors in different positions. OK, so we've got the room sorted. Let's take a look at the sprites. We'll be using four sprites, as you'll see here. The first sprite is facing to the left, and each sprite has two frames of animation. These are not exact copies of the Attic Attack game. Those sprites are actually slightly larger. I decided to stick with 16 by 16 to save memory. Of course, you're welcome to change this if you want. Uh, you can change to your own design, use your own character, do whatever you like. That's, uh, that's just part of the fun, isn't it? So, as you can see, left and right, followed by up, and then finally facing downwards. Again, pause the video if you want to copy these, use your own if you prefer, entirely up to you. Just keep the order and the number of frames. Okay, so let's move on to looking at the events. The first event that we can look at is the game initialization. I've deleted some of this, but the main thing there is I have a variable called F that's used later for the uh, to control the weapon. And uh, in the main loop, there really isn't much other than a basic animation timer. If you've watched any of uh, Paul's tutorials, you'll know that uh, that's a pretty straightforward thing to do. 
up here we've got let a x let b y just keeps a copy of the player location that's for uh, for use later with um, AI and stuff like that and here we've got uh, key 0 key 1 if can go right can go left and if C equals 2 the thing to notice here is that for can go down and can go up I'm using if C equals 1 the reason for that is because we've only got two frames of animation if the player moves diagonally it won't animate because two frames will mean go back to zero. Finally, we've got the check to see if the player is leaving the room. And um, basically, these are very similar for X and Y because it's a square. If 12 greater than Y, left, right, and uh, up and down. Very straightforward. Okay, so that is pretty much it for now. Just uh, thought I'd do a starter video. And um, if this one gets likes and subscribes, please do if you've enjoyed it. Then in the next video, I'll show you how to do something like this. Throwing an axe and catching it. Okay, well, thanks for watching. Have a great day and hopefully I'll speak to you soon. Bye.